Welcome to a Keysmash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple camera controller that isn't just having the camera be a child of the player, as well as not having just a simple one on one relationship between the camera and the character's position. I'm going to be doing this through colliders so that way we can have a range that our player can move within our camera view before the camera starts moving with it. As you can see, I'm already starting off with a base. This base is similar to the end of our character controller tutorial. The only scripting that I already have done is horizontal movement. So if you need movement, the link to our tutorial will be in the description below. But if you already have your own movement, you do not need our script in order for this camera controller to work. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to hit like and subscribe. Before we begin, I want to give you my reasoning for not just making the camera a child of the character. So in this specific example, as you can see, I move left and right, and when I do that, my character's rotation flips 180 degrees. So if I were to take the camera and make it a child of my character, then my camera also flips, which would be extremely disorienting for the player. Now obviously this rotation issue could be fixed with a simple script that takes the character's position and sets the camera's position to that. But having a one-on-one -on -one relationship like that between the character and the camera can also cause some jarring for our players. If the player is moving suddenly, then the camera moves suddenly with the player, and that can take away from the immersion of our game. So in order to limit that, we're going to create a range that the player is able to move and make those sudden movements without the camera view also making those sudden movements. And again, we're going to be doing this through colliders. Normally I would start with the script but in this video I actually want to start with things that will be changing in the scene so that way you can see how it's laid out and how our script's going to be working as we're typing it. The first thing I'm going to do is create our tags. We're going to have three tags. The first one is going to be left, the next one is going to be right, and the last one is going to be boundary. The first two tags, left and right, will be the edges of our range our player will be able to walk before the camera starts moving, and the boundary tag is for the edges of our scene, so that way the camera doesn't continue past the edge, allowing our player to see things we may not want them to see. Now that we've created our tags, I'm going to go ahead and create our left and right colliders. So I'm just going to create an empty game object. I'm going to name it left. I'm going to pick the left tag, and then I'm going to give it a 2D box collider. I'm going to set it as a trigger, and then I'm going to go ahead and make it a child of our main camera. The reason you want your colliders to be a child of the main camera is so that way your colliders move with the camera, as your player will essentially be pushing the collider to push the camera. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and change the size to 1.2 in the X and 10 in the Y. And then I'm going to give it a 0 in the Y, a 0 in the Z, and then a negative 6 in the X. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, change the name to right, change the tag to right, and then change the position to 6. So if I click on the camera, you can see the range that our player will actually be able to walk before the camera moves. All of this space right here, the player will be able to move within, and the camera won't be moving while the player is doing this. Once the player hits an edge, of these colliders, the camera will start moving with the player in the direction that the player is currently going. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and create our boundary colliders. Again, we'll do the same thing where we create an empty. I'm going to call it boundary left and give it the tag of boundary and go ahead and give it a box collider and make it a trigger. For this one, I'm going to make the size 4 and a height of 10. And then for my left, I want it to be negative 9 and then 0 and 0. Then I'll go ahead and duplicate this and just rename it for right. And then I'm going to change the X to 30. And as you can see, these boundaries are just on the edge of my map. Getting the position for your boundaries exactly right is probably going to take some testing, but what you want is for the edge of the camera to be at the edge of the map when the player collider hits the inner edge of the boundary collider. So again, if we look at these, this right white line right here is the edge of your camera. You want this to be at the edge right here of your map when the edge of the player collider hits the inner edge of your boundary collider. So that's all we'll be doing to the scene, so we can go ahead and create our script. We're simply going to name the script Camera Controller 2D. We can go ahead and open this.
In this script, we're gonna have four different variables. One will be public, that will be the transform of our camera, and the other three will be private. So to go ahead and start with our public variable, we'll do public transform cam. And then our three private ones, two of them are booleans and the other one is a string. So our first boolean will be at edge. And we'll use this to determine if the camera is at the edge of our scene and to stop the camera movement. Our next one is going to be to determine if our camera is moving. And then finally, our string is going to be the direction that we currently want our camera to be going. We'll go ahead and go down to our start and give all of these defaults. We're gonna have both the booleans default to false. And then for our direction, I'm going to default it to right. And I'm defaulting it to right because my character starts in the right direction. However, the direction that you default it to doesn't really matter because the string will change as you hit the colliders. We're gonna go ahead and skip update for now and start with our functions. So our first one is going to be our move function. And inside this, we're gonna be checking the direction. So we'll say if our direction is equal to left, then we want to be moving our camera in the left. So we're going to do cam.translate. And then something that's really important here is you want the vector inside your cam translate to be the same vector that you use for your player movement. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my player movement and copy my vector for that. and paste it in here. And the reason that we want it to be the exact same vector of our movement is because if it's not, then either our camera will get ahead of our player or the camera will fall behind our player. So just make sure that this vector is the same vector as your character movement. However, since this is left, we do want it to be going in the negative direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a negative in front of our speed. Now we can move on to our else, which again is simply gonna be the same thing. except that we're going to have the speed still be the positive. Now that we've done that, we can move on to our on trigger functions. We're gonna have two. We're gonna use on trigger enter as well as on trigger exit. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our on trigger enter. And we're just gonna do collider 2D other and then what we want to check in here is if we've entered our left collider, our right collider, or our boundary collider. So we'll start with our left one. So we'll say other.tag equals left. And then if the other tag is our left one, we want to make sure that our moving is true. And this is saying we want our camera to start moving. And then we also want to make sure our direction equals left. And then we can just go ahead and do the same thing for our right direction. So we'll do else if other.tag is equal to right. And then what we want to do is the same thing that we did up top, except that we want our direction to be right. So our moving is still true. And then our direction is right. And then finally, we'll do our else if for if the other's tag is boundary. I'm gonna go up, I forgot to put an equals here. And then the only thing we're doing in here is saying our at edge equals true. And then our on exit function is gonna look fairly similar, but the values will pretty much be the opposite. So I'm gonna copy and paste it. Make sure that you change your on enter to on exit. And then what we wanna do is set our moving to false because once we leave the trigger, we no longer want our camera to be moving. It no longer needs a direction because it's not moving. And so the same is true for the right. Our moving is false. It no longer needs a direction. And then for our at edge, we can put that to false. Because again, we'll have left the boundary, so we're no longer at the edge and we can have our camera move again. So now we can go back up to our update and start filling that out. We wanna be checking if we're not at an edge, if we should be moving, and if both of those are true, then we wanna be calling our moving function. So we'll go ahead and do if not at edge, then we wanna check if we're supposed to be moving. 
And if we are supposed to be moving, we want to go ahead and call our move function. So this is the entirety of our camera controller script. Again, we're using triggers to see if we've hit the end of our range on either the left or right to start moving our camera, as well as checking to see if we've hit the boundary of our map, so that way the player doesn't see outside of it. And then we're moving our camera at the same speed that our player's going whenever we're at the end of that range. So we can go ahead and go back to our scene, go to our character, and then we can attach our script to it. You need to make sure that you drag your camera into that property, and then we can go ahead and test and play. So as you can see, I can move within the range without moving the camera. Once I hit the end of that range, it does move the camera. And once I hit the edge of our map, the camera no longer moves. I can also do the same with the right. So if I go over until I hit the edge of the right, it moves the camera. And once I get to the edge of this right side, the camera no longer moves. So that way the player can't see past our map. And as a recap, this was simply done using colliders to determine the size of the range that we want, when we want our camera to move, which direction we want our camera to move in, and when we want our camera to stop moving. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope this helped you understand a little bit more why you don't want to just have the camera be a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the character in terms of position, or even simply a child of the character. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments below, or feel free to join our Discord and ask them there. The link for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.